are these things? Are they good or bad? And, um, and I think some of them are bad. In a startling revelation, emerging evidence hints that Nephilim giants may still be alive today. For centuries, legends and biblical references have shrouded these colossal beings in mystery. Now, compelling new proof is challenging our understanding of ancient myths, suggesting that these giants might not be relics of the past, but could still exist in our modern world. This breakthrough promises to reshape the narrative surrounding the Nephilim and ignite renewed interest in their enigmatic legacy, and Joe Rogan is using his platform to amplify these discoveries. What evidence supports their existence? Why are we suddenly seeing this evidence? Discover Joe Rogan. Nephilim giants are still alive, and here is the proof. Origin of belief. Archaeologist G.E. Wright suggests that the belief in the Nephilim, particularly their depiction as giants, might have originated from the Hebrews' observations of the impressive megalithic structures and Cyclopean masonry walls found in the Transjordan and Canaanite cities. These walls were remarkably thick, with some being as much as 18 feet across. Wright speculates that the Hebrews, when confronted with these enormous constructions, might have imagined that they were built by a race of giants, thereby giving rise to the Nephilim legend. However, he also points out that the ancient Canaanites themselves were relatively short in stature, both before and after the third millennium. BC, archaeological findings have not produced evidence of any inhabitants of abnormally large size from that period, which suggests that the belief in giants was more likely a product of cultural imagination rather than based on actual physical evidence. Biblical scholar Brian R. Doak offers another perspective on the origins of Nephilim lore. He argues that the stories about the Nephilim were meant as a polemic against the heroic and epic traditions that were prevalent in cultures surrounding the Hebrews. In other words, Doak believes that the narratives surrounding the Nephilim were crafted to counter the glorification of epic heroes that were common in the literature and worldviews of neighboring cultures. This suggests that the Nephilim were used in Hebrew tradition as a way to challenge or undermine these foreign heroic ideals. Similarly, J.C. Greenfield theorizes that the stories of the Nephilim may have been influenced by negative aspects of the Apkalu tradition in Sumerian mythology. The Apkalu were a group of seven pre-flood sages in Sumerian culture, revered for their extraordinary wisdom and often depicted as part human and part fish. Some of these Apkalu were even referred to as the son of Ea, linking them to divine parentage. Greenfield suggests that the Nephilim legends might have been created as a negative reinterpretation of these revered figures, transforming them from wise sages into fearsome giants. Brand and his colleagues, in their 2023 study, present yet another interpretation of the Nephilim. They argue that the term Nephilim could refer to elite or royal warriors from a legendary past rather than a race of beings with supernatural origins or abnormal size. According to their research, the Nephilim mentioned in the Book of Numbers, chapters 13 and 14, were likely indigenous elite warriors who lived in Canaan before the arrival of the Israelites. This interpretation suggests that the Nephilim were a distinct warrior class or nobility, known for their strength and combat skills, rather than giants in the literal sense. Ellen White offers a different perspective on the role of the Nephilim in biblical narratives. She believes that, Within the context of the biblical stories, the Nephilim serve a specific narrative purpose. According to her, their role is to perish so that the underdogs, or God's chosen people, could achieve victory. This interpretation sees the Nephilim not as a glorified or heroic group, but rather as obstacles that must be overcome to demonstrate divine favor and the triumph of God's will. The Anakites, who are often associated with the Nephilim in biblical texts, also have an interesting historical background. The Anakites are mentioned in the Egyptian execration texts from the Middle Kingdom period, which dates between 2055 and 1650 BC. These texts list the Anakites as among Egypt's political adversaries in Canaan, suggesting that they were a significant presence in the region during that time. The association of the Anakites with the Nephilim in later biblical texts may reflect an attempt to link these formidable historical figures with the legendary giants, further enriching the mythos surrounding the Nephilim. What are the different histories of the Nephilim giants? Keep watching to find out. Unveiling the mysteries of the Solomon Islands. 
One of the most intriguing and mysterious legends that have emerged from the Solomon Islands is the tale of the Nephilim Giants. These stories have been passed down from one generation to the next, with vivid depictions of massive beings that are said to inhabit the islands. According to local folklore, these giants make their homes in caves, using an intricate network of underground tunnels to travel between the various islands. The descriptions of these giants vary significantly, but they are often portrayed as standing around 10 feet tall, with some reports suggesting they could be even taller, reaching heights that defy the imagination. The giants are described as having long hair, which can vary in color, ranging from black to brown, or even reddish hues. Their eyes are often depicted as being red and piercing, set in flat, broad faces with large, wide mouths. Despite their formidable and somewhat monstrous appearance, there are those among the islanders who believe these giants possess a level of intelligence and sophistication, suggesting they have their own societies and complex social structures. The beliefs surrounding these giants are not unanimous. They are, in fact, quite divided. Some of the local population view these giants as guardians of the land, ancient beings who have always existed, silently watching over the islands and their inhabitants. To these people, the giants are protectors, keepers of the natural world. However, there is also a more sinister narrative that paints a very different picture. Others see them as malevolent creatures, dangerous predators that pose a constant threat. Numerous stories tell of these giants hunting, killing, and even consuming humans, fostering a potent mixture of fear and respect among those who live on the islands. One particularly chilling story tells of a young woman named Mango, who, according to legend, was abducted by the giants in her youth. For more than 25 years, she was believed to be dead, having disappeared without a trace. When she was eventually found, she was in a state of hysteria, foaming at the mouth, and shockingly, she was pregnant. It was believed that during her time with the giants, she had been taken as a wife by one of them. The child she bore was described as a mutant, a half-giant boy. Unfortunately, this child only lived until the age of five before the local people, driven by fear of the unknown and worried that history might repeat itself, took the child's life. For a long time, these stories were regarded merely as folklore, tales spun from the threads of imagination, with little to no concrete evidence to substantiate them. However, recent times have seen a resurgence of interest in these legends, spurred by new research and first-hand accounts that claim to have encountered these giants or discovered physical evidence supporting the tales. These fresh reports have reignited curiosity and debate over the possible existence of the Nephilim giants on the Solomon Islands, inviting a new generation of explorers, researchers, and enthusiasts to delve into the mystery that has long fascinated and haunted the islanders. The Etymology of Nephilim The Brown Driver Briggs lexicon, published in 1908, defines the term Nephilim as giants, but also cautions that any suggested etymologies for the word are highly speculative and uncertain. Numerous interpretations have been proposed, with many assuming that the word Nephilim derives from the Hebrew verbal root NPL, which means to fall. One notable interpretation was put forward by Girdlestone in 1871, who argued on page 91 of his work that the word comes from the Hifil causative stem in Hebrew. According to this interpretation, the name Nephilim could be understood to mean those who cause others to fall down, suggesting an active or causative role. Conversely, Ronald Hendel offers a different perspective, proposing that the term is actually a passive form. According to Hendel, Nephilim might be interpreted as ones who have fallen, drawing a grammatical analogy to other Hebrew words such as pakid, meaning one who is appointed, which could refer to a deputy or overseer, and asir, meaning one who is bound, which typically refers to a prisoner. Another interpretation suggests that the term fallen might refer to those who have fallen in battle, similar to the concept of the jibberim, a term also associated with mighty or valiant warriors. The majority of ancient biblical translations seem to favor the interpretation of Nephilim as giants. This interpretation is found in many significant biblical texts, including the Septuagint, Theodotion, the Latin Vulgate, the Samaritan Targum, Targum Onkelos, and Targum Neophyti. However, there are some variations in translation. For example, Symmachus offers a different perspective 
translating the term as the violent ones. Meanwhile, Aquila's translation is more ambiguous and has been interpreted in two possible ways, either as the fallen ones or as the ones falling upon their enemies, which implies an active stance in combat or aggression. Exploring the legend of the Nephilim. In the year 1568, the Solomon Islands were chartered by the Spanish explorer Alvaro de Mendana. This discovery is often regarded as the start of a unique and captivating historical link that connects the islands to the ancient legends of the Nephilim giants. Mendana, believing he had stumbled upon the fabled source of King Solomon's legendary wealth, decided to name the islands in honor of the biblical king himself. But how do these tales of giants intertwine with this early European exploration? According to various legends, it is said that King Solomon dispatched his ships across the globe in a quest for precious treasures, with gold being one of the most sought-after commodities. The immense wealth of King Solomon, which is extensively detailed in both the Bible and other historical texts, became a focal point for many explorers during this era. The Spanish, particularly those participating in the Age of Exploration, were especially fascinated by these stories and often utilized biblical narratives as a form of navigational chart to guide their journeys across unknown waters. Mendana's expedition to the Solomon Islands was motivated by the conviction that these islands were indeed the source of Solomon's renowned gold. His voyages were heavily influenced by ancient texts that purported to map out the trade routes and riches associated with the biblical king. Despite Mendana's fervent belief in his discovery, the existence of gold on the Solomon Islands was never confirmed during his lifetime. Nevertheless, recent archaeological excavations have revealed substantial gold deposits on the islands, which have lent a degree of credibility to Mendana's original claims. This raises a compelling question. Why is the discovery of gold so significant in the context of the Nephilim giants? Interestingly, the legends surrounding these giants are closely connected with the island's history. The very same ancient texts that led explorers like Mendana to the Solomon Islands also spoke of giants that were said to inhabit these lands. According to local folklore, these giants were far from mythical. They were real, living beings that made their homes in the island's caves and rugged mountains. As time passed and more stories and pieces of evidence came to light, the focus of these legends began to shift from tales of gold to accounts of these mysterious giants. Following in Mendana's footsteps, explorers and researchers who arrived on the islands started hearing stories from the local inhabitants about these enormous beings. Initially, these tales were dismissed as mere superstition or folklore without any substantial proof to back them up. However, things began to change as physical evidence started to surface. Recent archaeological digs and explorations have uncovered artifacts and remains that suggest the existence of extraordinarily large human-like creatures. These findings have reignited interest in the age-old legends of the Solomon Islands and have led many to reassess the island's history, questioning what is myth and what could potentially be a hidden reality. The merging of historical exploration, ancient biblical texts, and local legend creates a narrative that is as enigmatic as it is fascinating, leaving modern-day explorers and historians to ponder the true stories behind the Solomon Islands. Is the history of the Nephilim similar to the one in the Bible? Let's find out more. Legend of the Nephilim in the Bible In the Hebrew Bible, there are three significant and interconnected passages that reference the Nephilim, providing insights into these enigmatic beings. Two of these passages are found in the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible. The earliest mention of the Nephilim appears in the book of Genesis, specifically in Genesis chapter 6, verses 1 to 4, just before the story of Noah's Ark and the Great Flood. Genesis chapter 6, verse 4, reads as follows, The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God went to the daughters of men and had children by them. They were the heroes of old, men of renown. This passage from Genesis introduces the Nephilim as a group present on the earth in ancient times. The text refers to them as the mighty men that were of old, men of renown. The Jewish Publication Society's translation chooses to simply transliterate the Hebrew term Nephilim, maintaining the original word without offering a direct translation. In contrast, the King James Version of the Bible translates the term Nephilim as giants, suggesting a more specific interpretation of these beings as physically large or formidable creatures. 
The exact nature of the Nephilim is made more complex due to the ambiguity present in Genesis chapter 6, verse 4. The verse leaves readers uncertain as to whether the Nephilim are themselves the sons of God, or if they are the offspring of the sons of God who mated with the daughters of men. Some scholars, such as Richard Hess and P. W. Coxon, interprets the passage to mean that the Nephilim are the offspring of these divine beings and human women. This interpretation suggests a hybrid nature for the Nephilim, combining both divine and mortal elements, and positions them as beings of great power and stature, which aligns with their depiction as heroes of old, men of renown. The second passage that references the Nephilim is found in the Book of Numbers, chapters 13, verses 32 to 33. Here, the Nephilim are mentioned in the context of the twelve spies sent by Moses to explore the land of Canaan. Ten of these spies provide a report that describes the Anakites, a tribe of Rephites, as descendants of the Nephilim. And there we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, who came from the Nephilim, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. In this account, the spies report that they saw the Nephilim in Canaan, and were so intimidated by their size and power that they felt like mere grasshoppers in comparison. This description reinforces the image of the Nephilim as giants, or formidable beings of great strength and stature, capable of instilling fear in those who encounter them. The passage connects the Nephilim with the Anakites, suggesting a lineage or descent from these earlier giants. Outside the Pentateuch, there is one additional biblical passage that indirectly references Nephilim. This passage is found in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 32, verses 17 to 32. Of particular importance is Ezekiel chapter 32 verse 27, which contains a phrase whose meaning has been widely debated among scholars. When traditional vowels added to the Hebrew text during the medieval period are included, the phrase is read as gibberim noflim, which can be translated as fallen warriors or fallen gibberim. However, some scholars interpret the phrase differently, reading it as gibberim nephilim, which could mean nephilim warriors or warriors nephilim. R. S. Hendel argues that the phrase should be understood as warriors, the Nephilim, suggesting a direct reference to the Nephilim mentioned in Genesis chapter 6, verse 4. According to Hendel's interpretation, the verse reads, They lie with the warriors, the Nephilim of old, who descended to Sheol with their weapons of war. They place their swords beneath their heads and their shields upon their bones, for the terror of the warriors was upon the land of the living. This interpretation implies that the Nephilim, or beings like them, were warriors who were buried with their weapons, and their presence or memory continued to inspire fear among the living. B. R. Doak offers an alternative interpretation, suggesting that the term in Ezekiel should be read not as the specific term Nephilim, but rather as the Hebrew verb Nephilim, meaning fallen. Nevertheless, Doak argues that this still constitutes a clear reference to the Nephilim tradition as presented in Genesis, maintaining a thematic connection to the earlier accounts of these mysterious beings. The Nephilim, interpreting giants across cultures and translations. The earliest translations of the Hebrew Bible into Greek, specifically the Septuagint, which was composed in the 3rd or 2nd century BC, rendered the Hebrew word Nephilim as gigantes. In Greek mythology, the giants were powerful beings known for their great strength and aggression. However, they were not necessarily described as being of enormous size. This choice of translation by the Greek scholars of the Septuagint was subsequently adopted by later translators, including those who worked on the Latin Vulgate in the 4th or 5th century AD. The Vulgate opted to retain the Greek term gigantes, rather than translating the original Hebrew word nephilim directly. As a result, the concept of the Nephilim as giant offspring from the union of the sons of God and the daughters of men became a part of later medieval interpretations and translations of the Bible. The Greek translator's decision to translate Nephilim as gigantes rather than the more literal Greek term peptokotes, meaning the fallen ones, appears to be a deliberate and thoughtful choice. The term Peptocotes does indeed appear in the Septuagint translation of the book of Ezekiel, specifically in Ezekiel 32, 22-27, which suggests that the translators were aware of the literal meaning. However, the choice to use gigantes in Genesis and Numbers may have been made to ensure that the term was both understandable and resonant for the Hellenistic audience of the time. 
This translation choice reflects the complex and multifaceted nature of the Nephilim, as depicted in the Hebrew Bible, which emerges from three interconnected passages. In Genesis chapter 6, the Nephilim are presented as hybrid beings, born from the union of divine beings, sons of God, and human women, daughters of men. In the book of Numbers chapter 13, they are described as autochthonous, or native people, who are linked to the land of Canaan. Meanwhile, in Ezekiel chapter 32, the Nephilim are portrayed as ancient warriors who have been damned to the underworld. The Greek translators likely recognized similarities between the Nephilim and the giants of their own mythology. Both groups had ambiguous identities, being perceived as a mix of the human and the divine. Furthermore, both the Nephilim and the Gigantes were figures of fascination, but they were also viewed with a degree of moral disapproval or contempt. They were seen as embodying chaotic and dangerous qualities that posed a significant threat to both gods and humans. Additionally, both the Nephilim and the Gigantes were associated with the underworld and were believed to have originated from the earth. Ultimately, both groups were said to be confined there as well. The Book of Enoch, an ancient Jewish text that expands on biblical stories, offers a more dramatic depiction of the Nephilim. It describes them as great giants with a height of 300 cubits. Given that one cubit is approximately 18 inches, this description would make the Nephilim about 450 feet tall. This portrayal of the Nephilim aligns with a more fantastical view of these beings as enormous giants. In Islamic tradition, there are also references that may be linked to the Nephilim. The Quran in verse 26, 130, refers to the people of Ad, whom the prophet Hud compares to Jabirin, a term similar to the Hebrew Gibberim, which is often associated with the Nephilim. The people of Ad are described as giants, with the tallest among them reaching a height of 100 feet. According to Islamic legend, the people of Ad were not destroyed by the flood, as some of them were so tall that they were able to survive the deluge. Instead, they were annihilated by God after they ignored further divine warnings. After their deaths, they were said to be cast into the lower layers of hell. What discoveries have scientists made and what are the opinions of the locals on their experiences with these mysterious entities? Modern Encounters and Eyewitness Account During the Second World War, the Battle of Guadalcanal and the Solomon Islands emerged as a pivotal conflict between the Allied forces and the Japanese Empire. However, amidst the fog of war, both Japanese and American soldiers allegedly encountered something far more extraordinary than their human adversaries, giants. Reports from soldiers on both sides described sightings of enormous beings standing between 10 to 15 feet tall, roaming the dense and shadowy jungles of the island. These sightings were not isolated incidents. Multiple accounts from the time describe encounters with these massive figures during nighttime patrols. Some soldiers even claim to have engaged in skirmishes with these giants. The Japanese forces, in particular, reportedly suffered severe losses, with some accounts suggesting that they lost more than half of a squad to these mysterious beings. There are even stories of soldiers being carried away by the giants, their fates unknown. These strange encounters left a lasting impression on those who experienced them, and many soldiers struggled with insomnia, haunted by the memory of their comrades' screams echoing through the night. There is a great deal of skepticism surrounding these accounts, with several more plausible explanations being proposed. One potential explanation is gigantism, a rare medical condition characterized by excessive growth due to an overproduction of growth hormone. This condition has been documented throughout history, leading some to speculate that these so-called giants were, in fact, individuals suffering from gigantism. Another theory suggests that what the soldiers encountered were exceptionally tall indigenous people. The Solomon Islands are home to a diverse population with a wide range of physical characteristics, and it is conceivable that in the heat of battle and under extreme stress, soldiers might have mistaken tall islanders for giants. Fear, fatigue, and the psychological stress of combat can significantly distort perceptions making it easier for soldiers to believe they were facing something supernatural or otherworldly. Despite these rational explanations, belief in the existence of giants continues to persist. In recent years, both locals and explorers in the Solomon Islands have reported sightings of large humanoid figures. Some of these reports describe seeing the figures from a distance, moving swiftly and effortlessly through the dense forest canopy. 
Others recount more direct and unnerving encounters. One of the most compelling modern accounts comes from Marius Boirayon, who spent several years researching and living among the islanders. Boirayon collected numerous testimonies from locals who claimed to have seen giants or discovered evidence supporting their existence. These accounts, combined with Boirayon's personal experiences, have significantly fueled ongoing interest in the legend of giants, often referred to as Nephilim. Moreover, there have been intriguing discoveries of oversized human remains and tools that seem to lend credence to these claims. Archaeologists have uncovered large bones and artifacts in the Solomon Islands and various other parts of the world that suggest a race of giants might have once existed. Fossil Remains of Giants Claims of Nephilim remains being discovered have often been a focal point for hoaxes and instances of mistaken identity throughout history. One of the earliest notable examples occurred in 1577 near Lucerne, Switzerland, where a series of large bones were unearthed. These bones were initially believed to belong to a giant from the antediluvian period, with an estimated height of 5.8 meters. The discovery stirred considerable excitement and speculation about the existence of giants. However, over two centuries later, in 1786, naturalist Johann Friedrich Blumenbach revealed that these supposed giant bones were actually the remains of a mammoth, not a giant human. Another similar incident involved the renowned Puritan minister Cotton Mather, who, in 1705, speculated that fossilized bones and teeth discovered near Albany, New York, were the remains of Nephilim that had been wiped out by a great flood, as described in the Bible. This interpretation gained some traction among those who believed in the literal existence of giants. However, as paleontology advanced, experts identified these remains as belonging to a mastodon, a prehistoric relative of the elephant, rather than to any mythical giants. The 19th century also witnessed a notorious hoax designed to exploit the fascination with the Nephilim. In 1869, a figure known as the Cardiff Giant was discovered in Cardiff, New York. The giant, allegedly a petrified prehistoric man, was later exposed as an elaborate hoax aimed at deceiving those who believed in the existence of ancient giants like the Nephilim. The Cardiff Giant became one of the most infamous frauds in American history, highlighting the lengths to which some individuals would go to exploit public interest in these mythical beings. Nephilim in popular culture. The concept of the Nephilim, much like various other religious and mythological ideas, has made significant inroads into popular culture. This concept is notably reflected in various creative works across different media. For instance, the gothic rock band Fields of the Nephilim takes its name from these ancient beings, reflecting the dark and mysterious aura often associated with them. Similarly, Mick Farron's Rehnquist Quartet novels explore themes related to the Nephilim. In literature, the Nephilim appear in several prominent series. Cassandra Clare's The Shadowhunter Chronicles, including The Mortal Instruments, the Infernal Devices, The Last Hours, and The Dark Artifices all feature these entities as part of their intricate mythologies. The Hush Hush series by Becca Fitzpatrick and Madeline Lengel's book Many Waters also incorporate Nephilim lore into their narratives. Television series such as The X-Files and Supernatural have explored the Nephilim theme, blending it with supernatural elements to captivate audiences. In video games, the concept is represented in various ways. For example, in the Dark Siders series, the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse are depicted as Nephilim, born from the forbidden union of angels and demons. Similarly, in the reboot of Devil May Cry, the characters Dante and Virgil are portrayed as Nephilim, the offspring of the demon Sparta and the angel Ava. The trading card game Magic the Gathering reinterprets the Nephilim as ancient old gods, predating modern civilization. In Diablo III, the Nephilim are introduced as the first humans of sanctuary, resulting from the union of angels and demons, and play a central role in the game's storyline. The Nephilim also make an appearance in the heist-themed first-person shooter Payday 2, where their influence is suggested through various artifacts and a secret ending involving alien technology supposedly left by them. Additionally, the Japanese animated series Symphogear features a creature named Nephilim in its second season. There is even a role-playing game dedicated to the Nephilim, which explores the idea of powerful elemental entities reincarnating as humans. 
Various movies, videos, documentaries, and podcasts like Joe Rogan further delve into the lore and intrigue surrounding the Nephilim, demonstrating their enduring appeal and adaptability in contemporary media. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like the video, leave comments, and subscribe to the channel. Make sure to check out another interesting video by clicking on the video appearing on your screen right now. See you on the other side.